Hey guys, Spiritual Whistleblower here with another video on narcissistic abuse. Um, I'm going to be talking about toxic friends, narcissistic friends, how you can identify another way that you can identify that you have a narcissist amongst your group of friends. Pay attention. I'm dropping free game. I've been giving y'all what y'all want. Y'all say I don't talk about this enough and I'm going to, I'm going to give y'all some free game. Um, I've been dropping uh, videos on toxic narcissistic friends over the past week, and this is going to be another good one. I'm going to talk about mirroring, the mirroring effect, and how narcissists use this amongst their friends. Um, before we jump into it, I'm excited to say I have two more dates um, left over in my tour, my chosen one tour. On Saturday, September 24th, I'll be in Toronto, Canada for the very first time. Tickets have started selling. Y'all are buying tickets. I'm so honored. This will be my first time in Toronto. So y'all, the tickets are available. You can email me. I have the link posted on my Instagram and my TikTok, but you can also email me for tickets at Chanel Jasmine at Gmail. Chanel Jasmine at gmail.com. I'm going to pin my email down below in the comment section. Then to close it all out for Domestic Violence Awareness Month, which is October, on Saturday, October 1st, I will be in Houston, Texas, y'all. Y'all got to come through all my people in Texas. I will not be in Dallas, so but Dallas is a three-hour road trip. I want to see y'all in the building for Houston. I will be there. We're going to have food, cocktails. Um, we're going to kick off the month of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, which is October, and this is very near and dear to my heart. So Houston, Texas, y'all better turn up, come through. Let's do this. Come meet me. I got the books. We got music. I'll sign your books. We'll take photos and we're going to give everybody a chance to talk and tell their stories and, and come together collectively and you're going to meet other people and connect. All right. So let's go. Let's get into this video. Um, How, you know, this is another way because I've been giving y'all free game, free tips on how you can spot and identify a narcissist amongst your group of friends. Um, and I have experienced this too. I've been through, you know, I've gotten rid of, excuse me, not been through, but I'll just say I've gotten rid of, uh, a lot of toxic friends who were fake and, um, my way of dealing with it, I don't do the confrontation. That's another thing like Dr. Romani and so many excellent therapists have videos on this. When you realize that someone is narcissistic, they have heavy narcissistic tendencies or what have you, you, you pick up this behavior, um, a lot of people are like, well, do you call out a narcissist? Do you tell them they're a narcissist? Do you tell them, you know, do you point out their character and pattern of toxic uh, behavior that you picked up? And the answer is always no. Never, ever, ever, ever confront or call out someone for being a narcissist. What you have to do is either you gradually distance yourself and then you completely cut them off or you can abruptly. That's my preference. I do it abruptly. Um without looking back, no questions asked. I don't second guess myself. I block the phone number. I block them on social media. I block them across the board and I block them on email and I make it known with my actions. I'm not going to confront. I'm just going to cut you off and I don't have to explain myself. And if I find that you're trying to guilt me or bait me or even coerce me into giving you an explanation, you're not going to get one. And I'm just going to, you know, I'm pretty damn good, y'all. I'm excellent. My discernment is, is through the roof. You cannot play with me or my discernment. I don't go back and forth when I feel confused. Confusion means you have a demon amongst you. When you get into this energy of feeling confused about whether or not someone is a narcissist, you better trust that they are because confusion is an ind indication that you are amongst a demon. Because the devil is the master of confusion. That's biblical. First Corinthians, I want to say first Corinthians chapter 13, 44, for God is not the author of confusion. Satan is. So anytime you're, you're, you know, we're not talking about relationships, nothing romantic today. We're talking about friendships. So when you're amongst someone and their behavior and their character and their moral compass is making you confused or uneasy about them, you better trust that they're toxic. Confusion equals narcissist. Confusion equals toxicity. If their behavior was good one minute and then they switch up or, you know, you find out that they're one way with you and then they switch up and they're another way with somebody else in your group of friends, that is confusion. That is inconsistency. That is narcissistic behavior. Let's talk about it. I want to talk about mirroring. What is mirroring? 
to a narcissist when it comes to toxic friendships. You have a group of friends, right? See, I'm putting y'all onto game because I'm like a I'm like a hundred year old woman with so much wisdom. Like I, I I'm scary. People say I'm scary, but I scare myself on how how well my discernment is and how I can pick apart somebody's character. And and uh, it's like I can read people's thoughts. You don't want to fuck with me because because if if I look at you and and and, and I I start looking at you in a negative light. Nothing's going to pull me away from that. I'm not going to have a discussion with you. I'm not going to confront you. I'm going to stand on my decision that you're a fucked up human being. You're a narcissist. You're a demon. I'm going to get the fuck away from you. Goodbye. And if you come near me or violate my boundaries, there will be some serious consequences. I don't play that shit. I am the spiritual whistleblower. Okay. God is working through me. I am a vessel for God. I do not fucking play when it comes to doing this type of work. When you are amongst a group, a group of friends, mutual friends, you got a small, tight knit group of friends and you want to know if, this, you know, somebody's a narcissist amongst your group of friends. One of the ways, because there's several ways I could talk about this all day. One of the ways that you can identify them as being narcissistic is this technique called mirroring. Mirroring is when a narcissist, toxic, abusive, manipulative individual copies your personality and they take it and steal it for their own. This is why, you know, a lot of times when you hear a lot of experts and psychologists, and psychiatrists, they'll tell you when you get in a romantic relationship with a narcissist, you're not actually falling in love with the narcissist because he's mirroring your behavior. You're falling in love with yourself. All he did was steal your identity. He stole your personality. He, he, he morphed into you so that he could get you to fall in love with him because he has no identity. Now we're going to apply that same technique when it comes to friendships. Okay. This is what a toxic, abusive, manipulative, narcissistic friend will do. And if you don't, if you're not, if your discernment is not, you're going to miss it. But see, my discernment is fucking razor sharp. Ain't nothing getting past me. It might take me six months to a year, but I will catch your ass. I put that on everything. Don't try to be slick with me. Don't try to be fake, phony. Don't try to be, don't try it with me. And a lot of people try me. A lot of people get around me and they be like, oh, that spiritual whistleblower, she's good, but I, I'm going to test the waters and see if I can play with her. And I always blindside and cut they fucking ass off. Don't ever play with me. Because this, this, this gift that God gave me is something serious. I can damn near read people's thoughts. I, you know, I don't like the word psychic, but if we want to take it there and a lot of people test me and they can't, they be in disbelief at, damn, how does she do it? How does she figure me out? Bitch, because I'm good. This is a God given gift. But see, like a, like a narcissist in a romantic relationship, a toxic narcissistic friend will also mirror the personalities in that group of friends setting. This is what they'll do, right? Especially if it's a new friend and they're, they're, you know, you're introducing them into a group of friends, right? Or you pull somebody in to meet your group of friends. You show them around, you, you know, you introduce them, you show them love and you, you know, you, you let them be in your group, right? What this toxic individual will do with, they'll be fake and phony. Oh, the, 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 the charm and the personality and the ass kissing will be at an all time high. They're going to come with that, with their fake bubbly personality, their fake charisma. Oh, hi, you know, they're going to turn up the charm something. They're going to be trying to woo everybody over. This is the love bombing phase in the friendship. The fake phony facade, the fake charisma, the fake, you know, bubbly personality is all fake. I'm telling you right the fuck down. Now, what this narcissist will do, he will be, you know, he's a predator, this so-called friend, he or she, they're predators. You got to, before they are male or female, they are predators. So they, you, you, you're bringing them into this group of friends. You're introducing them and pulling them into your circle of friends to welcome them because they really are lonely and they don't have no fucking life because they usually push everybody the fuck away with their toxic asses or they, they don't have no friends because they, they're, they're best friends with their toxic ass mommy and daddy. Hmm. Anyway, um, what this narcissist will do when you pull them into that group of friends and introduce them, they're going to be sizing up all the friends in the circle. 
that's what predators do. They're going to be trying to size everybody up. Who's the slowest? Who's the dumbest? Who's the fastest? Who's the messiest? Who has the most money? Who has the least money? How can I benefit out of this one? How can I benefit out of this one? Can I sit up and gossip with this one? Can I be messy with this one? They're picking apart everybody's personality. They're studying everybody in that that group of friends. Then at some later point down the line when they're good and comfortable, they're going to get too comfortable in that group of friends and then the real behavior is going to start to slip. Now, we don't know any if, if that group of friends is paying attention and if their discernment is, is, is not there, they're going to miss this toxic behavior. It's going to go over their heads. It's going to go over their heads. They're going to miss all the clues and everything. But if, if there's one individual in that group of friends who is very, very uh, full of wisdom and they have uh, uh, lots of discernment, they're going to pick up on that toxic behavior because a narcissist is not going to drop it all at once. He's going to give you, he's going to give it in really small doses. He's going to breadcrumb this behavior and you got to be quick and you got to be sharp to catch it. So what he's doing after he's figured out everybody's personality, because he's, he's, he has no identity. The narcissist has no fucking identity. So once he studied everybody in that group of friends, He's going to get around everybody. He's going to pull everybody one by one. He's going to spend some quality time as a group. Ha ha, he, 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 Everybody's kicking it, having a good time. Yeah, it's all good when the group is together, kicking it. But individually, he's going to get everybody alone individually. Then what he's going to do, he's going to mirror. Imagine a narcissist holding up a mirror to you, your friend, your fake ass, toxic ass friend. So he's going to start turning his personality into yours. He's going to start thinking and and he's going to start stealing your slang. The words that you say, the way that you talk, he's going to steal your slang. He's going to steal your personality. He's studying you and stealing from you and he's morphing, morphing into you. So let's just say one of your friends makes a lot of money. He's fucking broke as fuck, living way above his means. But when he gets around this friend who has a lot of money and he gets her alone, he's going to start thinking he's on her level. He's going to start pretending to be rich and bougie and uh, he flies first class and he does this and that and he makes six figures. He's going to start thinking that he's on her level when he gets around her and he's not. That's because he's mirroring her behavior. Let's just say there's a broke person, a broke, you know, someone out of the group of friends that doesn't have a lot of money. But it's cool as fuck and ratchet as hell, but cool and and funny with lots of personality. So when he gets around that friend, he's going to hold up a mirror to that friend and he's going to mirror that behavior. And he's going to turn, he's going to morph into a ratchet, fun, crazy, cool person. When he gets, he's, he's, he's going to turn himself into everybody's personalities individually. And then you're going to notice he's going to play people against each other. And his behavior is going to slip because he can't be consistent with everybody. He's not going to treat this one as nice as he treats the one that makes the most money. He might ass kiss a little bit more with this person and mistreat this other friend. So he's playing people against each other and he's not treating everybody equally in the group and nobody in the group knows about it because he's being sneaky about it and doing it in a manner where all the friends, you know, don't know. All the friends have not compared notes yet. But individually, he has done each and every one of them differently. He has morphed into a different personality with each of them. Y'all, let's talk about this in a comment. Have you ever been mirrored by a narcissistic friend and how did you handle it? I know how I handled it. I cut that motherfucker off. Toronto and Houston, I'll see y'all in a little bit. Spiritual whistleblower.